Ah, good evening. Well, I got three quarters way through the the necklace. But as I was going along, I realized my thread is not long enough. And I don't know if you recall, but in the previous video, I was estimating I should take one and a half phantoms. And um, I only took one instead, instead of one and a half. Now, if I went through one and a half, I probably would have had enough for to complete the rest of this. So, you're going to witness how to tie off. So, I got as far as here. And I got to tie it off up here somewhere. Really don't make no difference where. But for me, I just like to get onto the main, like a, a main base area, like this here thread right here that runs through this middle. Now I'm just going on the other side of that, and then I'm just going to. Put my thread, my needle right in the center of that thread and uh, just give it a good pull. Because you want this to stay nice and secured. Now, when I come back, I'm going to have to stir it around here. <clears throat> but even though I got this tied in, I'm still going to loop through some zigzag it. You zigzag it for the reason of zigzagging it, it just makes it harder for it to unravel. You're making it like you're making it very secure at that time, and that's the idea. Oops, I always hit the stoop, it never fails every time. Like, I gotta invest in a better stoop. One of those solid ones. Yeah, it never fails. And I always try to be um, cautious where, where my hand is going. Sometimes you, uh, you lose that battle. <laughs> Alright. Just got done eat munching on some crackers. <clears throat> Go up through this way and then back around. I'm okay right there, so I'm just going to clip as close as the beads to the beads I can get. Now, I have leftover thread from um, a previous project. Yeah, I might have to go with... Yeah, I might have to just go with another uh, thread. Because this is going to give me a go taking it off. <laughs> it's funny because you try to make it so secure so it will never unravel. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is going to give me a go. I can see it. Yeah. 
that's just going to give me a go. So I'm just going to grab fresh thread off the spool. Now, where I double up, it really makes it makes the uh, the beading stronger. But I know a lot of you question about um, fire line. And I'd like to try fire line. I've never in my life ever beat it with fire line. And I'm like, I want to try because I have birch bark. And I want to make birch bark earrings. I get sweet grass and quills. And those are hot commodities. I mean, they were at those, those kind of arts pieces will go faster than beadwork itself. And you can get a better pricing on, on, um, for me, I can make like, uh, earrings and hair clips. Hair clips is my go-to for birch bark because nobody really deals with, uh, birch bark hair clips. You see mostly, um, like keychains and earrings, but you don't really see too many um, art projects of uh, of hair clips. You know what the crazy thing is? Is like everybody sees a lot of my work on Facebook. And I see other people post their stuff and they get like hundreds and thousands of likes and comments and orders. And I don't know why people don't like my work on Facebook for some odd reason. I don't know what it is. It makes me uh, discouraged at times. And I try not to, because everybody to each drone, you know what, that knot is too big. That was three knots, and I'm not happy with that, so. I try to make, like, two knots, and the knots got to overlap each other to give it that little bulge. But you don't want to get it too big, because it'll, it'll protrude out of the beadwork, so I try not to. Yeah, so I don't know what it is. Maybe, yeah, maybe uh, people are so used to seeing my art pieces. I, I just find, like, not too many people like my art pieces. And I make, I try to make um, originals. Like, I don't like copying other people's work. Like, you see a lot of them, they get those caps, and then they, they bead, and they add uh, rhinestones all around the caps, and people love that, and they go crazy over that. And I'm like, that's not even an art piece, in my, my opinion. The reason why I say that is because, I'm going to start way over here. Yeah, the reason why I say, I'm going to start from down here. I say that is because, um... There's not much in, inventive or creativity when you're copying someone else's work. And everybody's copying off from each other. Like, you go to a powwow, and there's, like, the same piece on almost every table. That really bugs me. Because, to me, that's not art pieces. Those are... Those are beat at work, but they're not, to me, they're not artistic. Because of the fact that you're not making it yourself. They're not originals. They're copying off from everybody else. So maybe that's what it is. I, I have no idea. Like, I refuse to be that type of person copying off from other people's work. I try to do my own That's good. 
So I gotta come all the way over here. I hope this is enough thread. Feels like another phantom long. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, fans, fan, fathom, long string. And that's how you sew on. See how that protrudes out? So after I'm done here, I'm going to possibly go and take the lighter to that. Just to burn it down. I don't like things sticking out like that. Alright, get in the middle. Okay. Boy, sometimes beads can give you a go, though. And check the other side. Make sure everything looks good. Try not to draw too fast on your string because you want to avoid it from tangling up. And believe me, this will get tangled very quick. So I try not to, uh, I try not to do it too fast because <sighs> all right, so I'm gonna rearrange this here. Go down this bugle. So if anybody out there has any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or, um, yeah, send me, uh, I don't know if we have inboxes on, on this app. I don't think we do. I'm not sure. <laughs> but find a way. Just gonna go through that little sucker. I don't like when the string gets twisted like that either. Because that creates problems too. I think the most challenging part out of all this beadwork is your thread. I 
I always do one of these things at the end after straightening out and you find your needle will go spinning around because the thread is so twisted. I find that using the thumb method helps a lot. Put some tension on, on the string and as you're pulling it through it just helps a lot I find. So you see me doing that a lot. And then I go down through this. It's all twisted. And I do this. And you can see it unraveling. And then the last part is this right here. And now I'm ready to continue on. All that trouble just to get one string on, yes. <laughs> so if you're going to deal with long thread, be prepared. If you, the, I, I would, I would advise if you're a beginner to do short spans of thread, but the problem is you're going to have to face this dilemma, re-threading, tying off and re-threading, and sometimes it's not always easy. There, so now I am prepared and ready to continue. But this here part, what I find helps is, it's going to look extravagant going on the neck, I swear. Believe me. Okay, so, um, like I said, I'm being very particular what beads I'm putting on because I don't like bulginess. And you will face a lot of bulginess when you don't have the right size beads back in the day they used to call it uh, beads on a string that were the most um, mostly of all the beads that were like all one size I don't know why they maybe because it was on a string but I have no idea I, I remember when I first started doing my bead work I think it was like early 20s. It might have been like mid 20s or something like that when I first started. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I, I was making things from ideas from my head and I would just go on working on these pieces and My work was so ordinary that a lot of people like my rear view mirror decorations that I was making. And, um, even one guy loved the ornament so much that he wanted me to make a, a large wall piece. Never got around to the wall piece after ordering because well I told him 
if he if he was really interested in me. Oh yeah, I was supposed to put one of these balls on. If you really wanted me to do this piece, then I expect you to pay up front. And that should be go along with anybody that's doing any kind of bead work. And if they give you an order for some kind of piece they want done and and it's really expensive, happen to pay at least half up front. Or have it fully paid up front. For me, I, I rather just have it fully paid but the pressure's on then you have to get it done in a certain amount of time because people do not want like waiting for their stuff if they paid for it that is why i do not like taking orders it's too hard oh i got myself in a jam here Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I thought I got my thread wrapped around. And it wasn't. Like, duh. Alright. So I'm deciding whether or not what kind of earrings I'm going to make. And I'm actually thinking of the, the ball and dangle type earrings instead of the wreath earrings. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. Undecided. But see, this here, like all the other um, beaded chokers that I've done, I'm charging $80 for those. This particular one uh, is going to have a different um, set of earrings. So the earrings actually takes me maybe two or three days to finish. And uh, so I'm not charged. I'm not going to be selling this piece for 80 the necklace itself I could sell for 80 without earrings. Oh, I think I got that backwards. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Alright, so I think I'll come back. I'll put this video on pause. And, um... Show you the rest when I come back, I guess. Show you when I'm done. You'll come. I only got maybe 10 more to do. It, this is time consuming because, like, I, I finished off quarter of way through last night. And then I put it down, and then I got back to it this evening. Early evening, too, at that, like, 5, 4 or 5 o'clock when I started. But this is so time-consuming, this here part. Because you got to unravel, and you got to sew through. Plus, where I had to tie off to add new thread, that, that's time-consuming. So I actually got through this part and now I'm three quarters way finished. Oh, I forgot my crystal. Never fails. Almost every every hand. I, that's what I've done. I made the mistake. <laughs> It's not the first, it won't be the last. I don't like that one. That's a good size right there. Oh, it's too big.
All right, I'm gonna pause you, and I'll be back. Hi, I am back. Down to the very last string. And I just got three more beads to add to the to the list and then I just gotta sew through. And that's where the nerve racking part comes in. Cause if you can remember on this end that bead by the clasp is very tight so I'm very nervous because the last thing I want to do is snap that bead and I snap that this will be all for nothing and I'll have to start from scratch but there's other ways I could I could tie off as well I don't have to go through that but I'm just gonna test the waters even this right here is tight but I think I can get it through no problem there we go see what just happened right there it's where it got all Jumbled. There. Got through that all right. Ooh, that was scary. Now, I don't dare to test this. No. So, that means I can tie off. First, I'm going to zigzag through. Can't even get the tip of the needle in through that bead, so I'm not even going to attempt to try. And that bugle down there is nice and tight so this first one that was nice and tight so I'm sure that it's not gonna unravel because of that but for the safety just for safety I mean um, peace of mind I rather tie off somewhere So, So I'm going to tie off right here. I always go in back of the loop. It's a habit. Ooh, that scared me there for a second. So it's tied off.
funny thing is, is when you're at the end of your work and you're doing this for safety precautions, <laughs> you get a little anxious and you just want it done. <laughs> That's why I'm rushing. Anxiety, I guess. I don't know why I feel like I need to rush. Rushing is not a good thing. All right, so. I'm going to go up through this bugle and cut it. Yeah, I feel good. Oh, boy. Can't believe I am done. Now I just get the earrings to complete. And there. Wow, that feels a little... There's a bit of weight on that. have a t-shirt this color so I'm going to slap the t-shirt on and put this around my neck and snap a pic and see what Facebook thinks. I don't know why I keep turning to Facebook to see what they think. <laughs> you guys matter to me. Be sure to like and subscribe. Share this post. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions please leave a message in the comment section. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this beaded choker. And this here is an original. I've never copied off anybody. But this here is my design. Um, this particular design with the colors. And, uh, but yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.